What's up? Professor Wargalese here. We are on lecture number two. We're learning CSS locations, selectors, and specificity. We're going to first start out by downloading these slides. It's going to be a PDF. You can also view them on Canvas. So if you just click on that little magnifying glass, you can go through the PowerPoint with me. I'm actually going to open up here in PowerPoint so I can use the preview mode. And let's go ahead and begin. So we're gonna first start out by looking at all the different locations for CSS, and then we'll look at the code for that. Remember, CSS is basically the styles and the colors of HTML. It lets you manipulate and alter how the HTML will look. Now you're gonna to wanna to know this definition for the exam. So here's a more official definition. CSS stands for cascading style sheets, and CSS is used to describe now this keyword describe is gonna be on the exam. Okay, so make sure you use that keyword. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on the screen or in other media. Usually CSS is used for web development. It can be also used for other things like XML or JavaFX, a lot of things use CSS. So it's gonna be used to display on the screen, not only web development and in other media. CSS saves a lot of work, especially if you use external style sheets. It can control the layout of multiple web pages all at once. So once I have a style sheet, I can link it externally and I can use that on several different pages, which will save a lot of work instead of doing inline styles, which you'd have to repeat several times. There's three ways to add CSS to HTML elements. And the first one's going to be inline, which is going to be using the style attribute on an HTML element. We'll look at that here in a second. The second way is internal, which is using the style element in the head section of HTML. And the last way is by using external. You're going to link the external style sheet in the head section of the HTML. Now, the most common way to add CSS is to keep the styles in a separate file. In most of the production sites that I do, I'll have an external style sheet and I'll link that into my HTML. What's nice about doing that is if I wanna keep the styles consistent across the entire site, you may have 10, 20 web pages. I could use that same external style sheet and keep it constant throughout the site, make the site look consistent. However, sometimes you will need internal styling because it's easier to demonstrate, easier for you to get the code up quickly as a prototype, and there may be some reasons to use internal styles. As far as inline styles, this course does not recommend using inline styles because it's very tedious and it's only used as a last resort. So actually on a lot of the challenges, this inline style is highly not recommended and you'll actually get points taken off. But on an exam, you'll wanna know there's three ways for CSS to be applied. Now the first is inline. I'll have an H1 element. Right now you may not know what an H1 element is, but that's okay, it's called a header. It's a header one. It's used to display, let's say, titles or headings. So in this case, I have an H1. You'll see I apply this style keyword and then I actually put the CSS as a string. Inline is used to apply unique styles to a single HTML element, and that's why it's highly not recommended in the challenges. You have to go each element and apply styles, when I could just use a CSS selector to do the same thing. Now, inline CSS is used to style the HTML elements. Like I said, it's not recommended but we'll see later that it has the highest specificity and in some cases you may need inline styles. If you use inline styles, it should be for a good reason, not just because that's the way you wanna do it. We also have internal styles. Now we'll look over here at the code. We'll see I have this style keyword in the head section. So I have this style start tag and close tag in the head section. You'll see I have my selectors here. I'm selecting the body, all H1s, all paragraph tags. I'm changing the color or the background color. If you see this style tag in the head section, you know that's an internal style. Internal styles are used exactly for inline styles. It's used to define styles for the HTML page. But you'll see inline is used to apply styles to a unique single element, whereas this one's used to apply styles for the single page. Like I said, it's defined in the head. It has a style tag. Internal CSS is good to use for this course. So if you wanna use internal, that's fine. It's totally allowed and recommended. But of course, the best way would be external. 
Now external is nice because I can use the same styles throughout the whole site. So I can put a link here and link the style sheet. Uh, it's used to define style for many pages. You'll see inline is a single element, internal is a single page, and external is for many pages. With an external style sheet, you can change the look of an entire website by changing one file. If I want to use this file, just add the link. All the styles are in this external script and it'll be applied to the page. Now, when I use external styles, it's going to be written in any text editor, but it's not going to contain any HTML code. A lot of times when students are starting out, they'll actually put a style tag in the external style and that's not necessary. The file is saved with the CSS extension and when I link it in the HTML with this link, it's going to put those style tags for me. So you don't need to do that. You can directly start writing CSS code in this external style sheet. So I put a .css, I start writing my selectors, I start writing my blocks of code, I change whatever attributes I wanna change, and it'll be loaded. Now, you'll see the three different locations for CSS. Continue to the next video, and we'll talk about some different selectors that we can use in those internal and external style sheets. Continue to the next video.